Hello, my name is Gabby and welcome back to my channel or if you're new here then welcome to my channel and in today's video I'm going to be talking about some of my favorite books that I have not talked about on this channel yet or at least I don't think that I have. Okay, so there was like this period of time where I wasn't really uploading YouTube videos due to school and I feel like that was around mid to late 2020, early 2021, mid 2021, I don't know. And I feel like the 2021 books that fell into this category kind of already got highlighted on this channel because I did end up doing a best list for that year. But I do feel like some of those 2020 books have gotten overlooked some or in certain cases just like completely on this channel and that is what today's video is for. So with that there will be content warnings for these books down in the description below. I have five books here and it's time to finally talk about them. So first off we have Gideon the Ninth by Tamsin Muir. I like to read the author's blurb for this book for a synopsis because I think it very accurately describes what we're working with here. And that author blurb is from Charles Schross and it says lesbian necromancers explore a haunted gothic palace in space. So I think that I talked about this book on my channel when I first hauled it and then I also talked about it more recently because I've been kind of sort of reading the sequel. But I don't think I've ever gone like really in depth about this book, like on this channel at least. I think I might have posted a review on Instagram or something, I don't know. So yeah, we're gonna get into it. This is a book that took me a really long time to read due to both the writing style and in some ways like the actual plot. And some of that plot just felt kind of slow at points, but I also really enjoyed the plot at the same time, and I also really enjoyed the atmosphere. Like in that sense, it was a really fun fall slash winter read, and I also really enjoyed the characters, both like our main characters, and then there were also some like really, really, really interesting side characters that I really enjoyed reading about. And then I also got really invested in what I am going to call the romance, even though I would not consider this a romance-heavy book, but I guess we can just say that there is a ship in here that I ended up really enjoying. There were just like a lot of elements of this that I had a really great time with, but like I said, it did take me a really long time to read, and I do think that factored into some of the things that I did not enjoy as much. And then also just some of the plot points and I remember specifically the fight scenes were really hard for me to like stay focused during for whatever reason. And that is not something that I technically think is this book's fault because that happens with me with a lot of books and I don't know why. But the characters were definitely what I would say is like the, the top thing that kept me going through this and I ended up giving it like a 4 to a 4.5 out of five stars. And now I just have to finish the- why? And now I do just have to finish the sequel. I got to page... I got the part two. It's page 137. I started it but I ended up putting it back down because I realized that like focusing issue that I was having with Gideon was also happening with this one. But I do really want to try again. I'm still debating whether or not I want to like start over because it's a lot of pages and like the words are small and I, I don't know if I want to like take that time. But I also feel like I do want to take that time because I want to appreciate this book for what it is because I feel like I should really love this book and I just have to get back into the headspace for it so that I can finally finish it and hopefully love it. The next up is How the King of Elfheim Learned to Hate Stories by Holly Black. This is a novella that is part of the Folk of the Air series and it follows like Cardin's perspective and gives different stories from him. So if you don't know, the first book in the series is The Cruel Prince, and if somehow you don't know what this book is about, because I feel like I just see the series everywhere, literally like all of the time. But this does follow our main character Jude, whose parents were murdered when she was young, and she and her sisters were taken from the mortal world to the High Court of Fairy. Ten years later, Jude is still trying to fit in despite her mortality, but a lot of the Fae hate humans, and that is especially the case for the youngest son of the king, Cardin. In order to get her place at the court, Jude must defy Cardin and navigate the court while discovering like her own tendencies for trickery and bloodshed. Okay, so The Folk of the Air is one of, if not, my favorite series and favorite trilogy of all time. I really gelled with the characters and I love the world and the court politics, but I especially loved our main character Jude and also the romance. So reading these stories through Cardin's perspective I found to be really interesting and it was honestly just nice to be back in this world in like any capacity. And the art for this book is gorgeous, like it's just physically a really lovely book. 
which is no surprise since this is illustrated by Rovina Kai, and I really enjoyed the illustrations this person did for Elatsue as well. I don't know, part of me feels like I kind of want and also need to do a reread of this because it is like, it's the Folk of the Air series, but also like it's a pretty short book and I read it in one sitting and part of me kind of just wants to take my time with it on a reread. And I do remember just loving like the atmosphere of this book and just overall having a great time and I gave this one a 5 out of 5 stars. So next up is If I'm Being Honest by Emily Wibberly and Austin Siegman Broca. And this follows our main character who is notorious throughout her high school for her brutal honesty. However, when that side of herself comes out in front of her crush, she fears that she may have lost him forever. So, inspired by the taming of the shrew, our main character begins to make amends with everyone she has wronged over the years and hopes that this guy will notice. This ends up leading her to a new guy who is at first not receptive of her attempts, but as they slowly get to know each other more and grow closer to one another, our main character starts to wonder if she's trying to change herself for someone that she may or may not even want. I was not expecting to love this as much as I did, but I really gelled with and loved our main character, and I loved watching her, like, explore things that she wasn't familiar with, and I thought the romance was really cute, and I know I've been mentioning a lot of ships throughout this video, but it's honestly not something that happens a lot to me with books. That also just makes, like, the ships that I do have even more special, so that's okay. There was one thing that I would have liked to see either resolved or, like, end differently, but that is, like, too spoilery for this video, but it is something that was kind of relevant in my rating. I mentioned this feeling in my spring TBR video, but I did end up reading this on, like, a nice summer day, and I got that feeling that I mentioned, and I will forever associate this book with that kind of weather and with that feeling, and it just added to, like, my overall positive experience. And I feel like it was just a really fun read and it exceeded my expectations that I had for it going in and I gave it 4.5 out of 5 stars. I also went out and bought the other books that these two authors have done together and I'm really excited and looking forward to getting into those when the time comes. So next up is Long Way Down by Jason Reynolds. So this follows the elevator ride that our main character takes as he debates whether or not he should take revenge against the person that he believes killed his brother. This was my first experience with a Jason Reynolds book and I was just like immediately blown away by the writing style and this one is actually written in verse and I love that and it just made everything come across like so much more powerful than like this book already is just by the story because this story is like a commentary and a take on gun violence and it's emotional and difficult and just an important story in that sense. And yeah, this is another one that was like a really quick read. I think I read it in like a day or two, if not just like a day, because I had a day where I was trying to finish my reading challenge, so I pulled out all of my shorter books. And yeah, I was just super impressed with this all around, and I easily gave it five stars, and I just really instantly was gripped by the writing and just needed to read more of this author, so I did. And on that note, the last book for this video is For Everyone by Jason Reynolds. So this is one long poem that revolves around dreams, and it just felt like so inspirational, especially during the time when I read it, because like I mentioned, I wasn't really uploading videos at that time. I do think this one might have actually made me cry, or like I might have just gotten emotional, or I, I don't really remember. It was that day where the reading challenge, and yeah, there, there was a lot read that day. <laughs> So this is special to me not only in that sense, but also just once again solidify Jason Reynolds as one of my favorite authors and an author that I need to be reading for as long as that is possible. And I do feel like that emotional response that I had the first time is why I haven't come back to this just yet, which typically does happen with like my favorite poems and my favorite poetry collections. But I am kind of interested to see like if I return to this book, how it would impact me now and just like where I am with like my education because I'm about to graduate from college at the end of the semester and just like my channel as well. And specifically with this channel, I just am incredibly happy and grateful for like any and all of the support that I have received here and then also on my other platforms as well. And that is extra relevant for this video since this is video 100, which is like crazy and thank you to the friend who pointed this out to me and yeah, I'm just really grateful. And I'm also just really grateful for what this book specifically has contributed to that. No matter like how short or how quick of a read this was, I do feel like it has significantly contributed. 
But yeah, if you haven't picked up anything by Jason Reynolds yet, I do highly recommend it, and I gave this five stars. Okay, so that is all I have for today's video. Thank you all so much for watching. Like, comment, subscribe, hit the bell, and answer the question that'll be around here if you want to do that, and hopefully I will see you here next time. Bye!